In this exercise, you can learn how to use Apache Cordova, formerly known as PhoneGap, to convert your web applications to mobile applications that people can download from the app stores for their mobile devices. It's a way for a single code base to be deployed on multiple platforms such as Android, iOS, OS X, Windows, and Electron. About 11 years ago, I produced some Android development tutorials using Java programming language in the Eclipse IDE. I also delved into PhoneGap and created some apps using that tool a long time ago. This year, 2023, I first researched online for the most popular free tools available for converting web applications to mobile applications. I quickly studied the top three, which are Cordova, Flutter, and React Native. I'm choosing Cordova over the other two because Cordova is the only one that does not require an abstraction layer above your familiar JavaScript, CSS, and HTML. The other tools require you to learn their proprietary code base, which abstracts those development languages. Cordova, for the most part, will allow a developer to program things in a more familiar way than the other two, saving you lots of time and allowing you more features for your apps. Each developer's environment will be different. So the first thing I'll do is direct you to the guide that explains the installation and setup of Cordova for each type of developer's operating system. I'm using Windows 10, so that's the computing environment that will be shown in this video. But the steps will be similar for people using other operating systems. Cordova has some dependencies that the developer must make sure are installed on his or her machine, such as in my case, Java SDK, Android SDK, and Gradle. But not everyone will require those same development kits. Acquiring those development kits is as easy as going to the websites, downloading them, then installing them on your machine. Some can even be installed directly through the terminal without going to the web. If you have difficulty getting yourself to the point where I begin creating apps in this video, making it to where you can't follow along, I recommend first searching for your specific issues online. Then if that fails, you can join a forum so that people with free time can help you debug your computing setup. The first thing you'll want to do is go to cordova.apache.org. And you'll see it says mobile apps with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Target multiple platforms with one code base, free and open source. You can just click Get Started, and that'll take you down the page a little bit. And it'll show you how to install Cordova, which is really simple. You just first have to download Node.js if you don't have Node.js already on your computer. And once Node.js is installed on your computer, then you can simply run this code right here to install Cordova onto your machine. Now, instead of going through steps two, three, and four here, we'll just go straight to the documentation because that's a better overview of everything and it's a lot more detailed. And please read all of the documentation if you plan on using Cordova. So I'll just click on Create First App. Now here, you can follow this guide and it will show you everything you need to know to create your apps. And there's also platform support. You wanna click and look at that to make sure that the platform that you want to deploy for is in the list. There's third-party tools, which these are third-party framework type things that you can use. Now here on the Create Your First App page, they have Android platform requirements, iOS platform requirements, and Windows platform requirements. So I'll click on Android platform requirements because that's what I'm targeting. I want to create an Android app first. And then it shows you on this page everything that you need to make this happen. And one of the most important things is setting up your environment variables, which they'll take you through if you click on setting environment variables. For instance, I'll show you real quick. If you type in env edit system variables or edit environment variables, then you'll have uh, a button down here it says environment variables click that then you have your system variables and also user variables you can see I've added a few things for my user variables 
and down in the system variables I just edited the path edit and I put in a few paths here one to Gradle to the Android SDK and the Java SDK All right now you'll want to open up your command prompt so you can type in command down in the little search bar there and you'll see your command prompt you can see we're in the C directory users and whatever your username happens to be and you can point this to any directory you want wherever you want your app created so we're gonna create our first app and I'm just gonna use this directory and I'm gonna type in Cordova create my first app then in the instructions they said to use a backwards URL kind of thing so I put in com.adamcorey.www space hello world that's gonna be the name of my app for instance when I load it onto my mobile device the app will have a name hello world and my first app this will be the directory that's created in this users username folder hit enter okay creating a new Cordova project now you want to go to that folder your user folder and make sure you have a folder in there now called my first app so go to your this PC then go to your Windows C Drive and then users the user that you want and there it is my first app okay I have this PC Windows Drive users the username that you're working under and then my first app here's the folder that was created now the next thing you want to do is type in CD because we're going to change the directory that we're working in to my first app then click enter now you're working in that directory now the next thing I'll do is type in Cordova platform and that will show you the various platforms available and the next thing we want to do is create a Android platform folder within our app that way we can build Android apps so type in Cordova platform add Android enter it says using Cordova fetch for Cordova Android 10.1.1 adding Android project now let's go check that folder and see what has been written to it alright you see I have some new folders here one called platforms there's Android next you want to go into your apps folder find the www folder double click that and you want to open up your index in your favorite code editor I'm gonna open it in atom.io I'm also going to open in the JS folder index.js open in the CSS folder index.css now in the CSS file you can pretty much remove all of this if you want but there's a lot of really useful good things in here that you might want to keep but you can edit anything you want alright so on the index.html you'll see that in the body element they're calling in two JavaScript files you have to keep that there you don't want to lose reference to those two files or connection to those two files but everything else in the body element you can get rid of so here I'm just going to remove their their heading their div class app and you can keep that app div there if you want but you really don't have to so here's my new body element I have a new heading it says it has an ID of heading 1 Adam's Android app then I have a button with an ID of BTN1 and another button with an ID of BTN2 and I created these so you can see how where I'm I'm gonna add event listeners to those buttons and I'm gonna assign functions that they execute when those buttons are pressed this way you're seeing where you can put your HTML and now I'll show you where you can put your JavaScript so take a look at index.js and what's happening here is you have an event listener for device ready 
which is similar to your window.load event on the web. It just makes sure that the everything is ready to be accessed. And you can see it says down here, function on device ready. Cordova is now initialized. Have fun. And you don't need any of this code that's inside of that function. All right, so I'm going to go into this JavaScript file and replace all of the JavaScript with this. It's pretty much the same, but I added something to the on device ready function, which is a function called event handling. So when device ready fires off, event handling is going to fire off. And that function is right here. You can see I'm just assigning objects, button one and bu button two, into variable names. Then I'm assigning event listeners of click for those two buttons. When button one's clicked, my funk one is going to run. And when button two clicks, my funk two is going to run. My funk one is set to make button one's opacity dot three. My funk two is set to make the heading that I have on my page colored pink. So make sure you save those files. And once they're all saved, and you can see here's my heading that's going to be colored pink. And here's button one that's going to be made transparent when I click it. And I did simple things like that just to let you know that your application is operational. Once you load it onto your mobile device, you go ahead and click those buttons and you'll see them working. And in the CSS file, I'm just going to remove everything. Save that. But like I said, there's a lot of cool, useful things in there that you might want to keep. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. All right, next we'll open up our terminal again. Let's go back to our directory that we're supposed to be working in, which is my first app. Then we're going to run this command, Cordova build Android, then press enter. Starting Gradle Daemon. Now usually it'll be just mere seconds, two seconds, but the first time you run it, it'll take some time. But the subsequent operations will be a whole lot faster. And it shows you the path to the APK file that you want to test on your Android device. See the path? Users, your username, my first app. Platforms, Android, App, Build, Outputs, APK, Debug, and there's the APK file. So you go to your App folder, double-click Platforms, Android, App, Build, Outputs, APK, Debug, and there's your APK file right there. Copy that and paste it into your phone's directory. When you plug your phone into your computer, you want to file transfer this APK into the main directory of your file system for your phone. All right, there's my PC, my Moto Z, internal storage, and there's the file system, and I'm just going to paste it right there. See my APK file in my phone's file system. Now you can close that. Check. Okay, now... You want to open up your phone and go to your file system and you'll see in the apps category you have one and I don't know if you can see that I'm hoping you guys can see it but it might not be visible I'm sorry if it's not and then it says hello world do you want to install this application blah, 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 blah. install install anyway open don't send ok 
Okay, it says Adam's Android app. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. And then I'll click button one. And that made button one opacity 0.3 instead of a full one. Now I'm going to click the next button. And you see how it turned my heading pink? I'm not sure if you can see that. But now you can tell my application is working. My JavaScript's working, the CSS, and everything else. Now the next thing you might be wondering is how to output or build an .aab file, which is an app bundle that is uh, required for the Google Play Store. Thanks to one of you guys in the comment section letting us know that Google Play Store no longer accepts APK files. They want a .aab file, which is an app bundle file. So you can put this command in and you'll get the app bundle. Press enter. And all these warnings you see, you can work on getting rid of those. I'm fairly new to this, so I'm going to have to work out any kinks that are in place. But it's not stopping me from building my apps, you can see. All right, so now let's go see if that file is ready. So you can see inside of my outputs folder for my Android platform, there's a, not just an APK folder, there's a bundle folder now. Double click that, double click release, and there's your .aab file. And you can also, in this command that we put in place here, you can add your key store information when you're putting this command in place, which the Cordova guide should show you how to do. You can have your key store password and identifier and all that in this command for your app bundle. And that should be all you need to get yourself started. And uh, there might be questions like, hey, can I make an Ajax request or fetch data from the server? And Ajax requests work. Uh, anything in JavaScript should work. But there might be settings that, that are in the guide. You guys have to read the guide. There are settings that you can put for security and whatnot in the guide. It shows you how to make settings to where things aren't blocked. But most of JavaScript should just work out of the box. Now I may or may not do more Apache Cordova tutorials because this should have you set up and ready to go. But if there are things that people are requesting to see that they can't figure out how to do, I may create one or two more videos for Apache Cordova. And I'll speak to you next time. Bye bye.